Yeah, it's not me. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to take ages as gracefully as her, but yeah, this, this talk is going to be about women in cybersecurity, and I will also talk about some stuff that I do in my PhD thesis. Uh, I don't want to be so boring, and that's why I put some superhero pictures that you are going to see in a bit. And I can go so fast, and if I go so fast, please interrupt me, and you can ask any question anytime you want. Uh, but just before I start, I want to thank you all being here and supporting the Women Tech Makers. And also, I want to thank any, any uh, Laurence, Marie-Therese, and all the organizers. They put great effort to make this happen. And I really appreciate their, 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 their support and their efforts. I, I, I just want to say this. Uh, I just want to start with a question. How many male superheroes can you name? I already put the pictures, but you can name it. Spider-Man, Spider Superman, Hulk, Captain America. This is Mr. Who, I guess. Hulk, many. And what, what about the women heroes? There are very few, and I already put the pictures of them. Cat women, Wonder Women, and the Supergirl. Not, not too much women, and they are all naked. <laughs> but, you, uh, uh, <laughs> but, but, but my, my point is when you list men and the female, female are obviously much more than women. And, and uh, I, I just want to give some uh, information. The, the half of the comic uh, fans are women, but the, all the super, and women are looking for strong, female characters on comics, on the films, but still all the female characters naked or in, in bikinis. You can prefer that, but uh, I, I don't see any strong contemporary women hero in the comics, in the Hollywood, but it's not a topic. I believe there is too much to do for the Hollywood or the comics to provide the gender equality. It's not our topic. My topic will be about real, real, real person like, you don't need to be a superhero to chase the bad guys. You can be an academician, you can be a security profession like me, or you can be a police officer. And um, even though, even though the, there are many things to provide the gender equality by organizations, by the governments, by the individuals, as an individual, I am here to talk about the current security landscape the opportunities for women in cybersecurity, current talent crisis in cybersecurity, and if you like to make a career in cybersecurity, what steps or what to do to be a cybersecurity profession, basically. I, I hope this helps, and I, I, I'm just going to share some free source of information, free source of books that might help you if you're interested with the topic. Me. Uh, I'm currently working as a security architect in uh, air transport and air communication company called CETA, about which I will provide some information. And at the same time, I am a PhD student in Ecole Technologie Superior, and I am mostly uh, working on nat natural language processing, text mining, and sentiment analysis. And lastly, but not leastly, <laughs> I'm a new mom of 14 weeks a puppy. I just want to put this picture, and this this is how I work most of the time, and he's helping me when I have some troubles with job, with my thesis. I, I think he's so good, that just, that's why I just put his picture. Uh, and for the academy I already mentioned, I'm working on natural language processing, text mining, pattern recognition, and also spam analysis. And my thesis topic is about uh, mining user, user opinions from user reviews on app stores, and also opinions spam identification, which is a very big problem on online stores um, by using the machine learning methods. At the same time, in terms of chasing bad guys, uh, we are conducting a project uh, with the contribution of Surtegep Quebec, and the idea is developing some automated tools uh, in order to flag the predators, online predators, sexual predators actually, by using the text mining, 
um, and open uh, machine learning methods. And we already made a publication, book chapter basically. The title is the Data Mining Trends and Applications in Criminal, criminal Science. Uh, apart from my job as being a security professional, I'm also doing such kind of stuff in academia. And this project got a funding uh, through the Acceleration Quebec MITAC. To be honest, my, my interest to tax mining, uh, I, I didn't give enough information about my background, but I did my master in electronic engineering, mostly in digital signal processing, pattern recognition. And I want to do something else other, my, other than my master or my job. That's why uh, I, I went with the natural language processing. My, my real interest, as you might think of uh, online shopping, and I really wonder what others think about the products, trends, news. That's why I started to play with some web crawlers and doing some text summarization. Uh, and in my thesis, I'm mining the user reviews from the App Store. Uh, but I need to say that this web crawling has some uh, implementations on the security area. For example, we implemented a tool developed by our, our team, and we are crawling what the hackers or the attackers are talking about you on internet. Uh, I, am not, I am not only using the web crawling to learn, you know, the lipsticks or the user reviews on the Amazon, but at the same time, we are tracking what the hackers or the possible attackers are talking about our co uh, company on internet. Uh, I just want to give a brief information about the landscape uh, or the sector. Uh, the, the company, as I said, is providing some IT and telecommunication services. And the threat, many very, various kinds of threat actors, including some governments, are targeting airlines, aircrafts, and, uh, and such companies like us. You might heard of Mal Mal the, the missing Malaysian flight, uh, which was missed in March 2014, I guess. And I, I recently read the news about it. It was found in somewhere in Africa and so on. But there was a non-proof non -proof theory that the, the flight was uh, hijacked by the attackers. It's not proved yet, but just after this event, after four months, the website of Malaysian website is cracked uh, by the uh, attackers. And the last event we came across was the airport bombing happened last week in, in Somalia. It was the second time in a month. In this la landscape, we are trying to, you know, provide the company products company infrastructure, and the, as the coverage of the company is so high, so immense, I can give you an, uh, information as 95% of the international destinations, basically the airline, uh, airports, are covered by CETA, uh, CETA network, and in this landscape we try to, you know, to protect the products, the infrastructure, and so on. In CETA, what am, am I doing, basically? Uh, I am following the threat actors, as I mentioned, doing some web crawling, getting some information from data, uh, data, um, data feeds, alerts, reports, and the organizations like Aviation Isaac. And at the same time, I'm trying to uncover the zero-day vulnerabilities. And if it is needed, I'm doing some security investigation and doing some malware analysis if it is needed. And uh, if it's possible, I'm trying to come up with some actionable advices uh, and protect the infrastructure. Time to time, I involve in deployment of security infrastructure like firewalls, IPS, IDS, and so on. You, you can name it. I, I already mentioned the landscape in which we are living, but. Apart from this, all the companies are facing certain security, cyber security challenges. Uh, I try to, to list them, uh, but basically, as you know, we are all talking about cloud and data is everywhere and it's so pervasive. 
And it's really hard to protect this, this data while the companies or corporations are ex expected to be more open. And the supply chain um, chains are getting so interconnected, you cannot even follow where is your data, in which data center, God knows. And also the, the actors are getting more and more advanced than we do. And the techniques, the malwares they develop, the things they think of are more, more advanced than the security professionals. And the lastly, this is the main topic of my, my, my presentation, agencies and also car, car, corporations are universally short on expertise and there is a tremendous talent gap about which I will provide you some, some numbers. Uh, I, I took these numbers from the Global Cyber Security Status Report from last year, and it says they, 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 they mentioned that there is 300,000 unfilled cyber security jobs in the US, and it is estimated to grow to 1, 1 to 1.4 million globally by 2020. And it's safe to say we have a talent crisis, obviously. But sadly, only 11% of information security workforce are women, even though there are some organizations like Women's Society, like Google, like Cisco Women, trying to empower the women, uh, the, the talent gap and the absence of women part participation in cybersecurity is so obvious. And this is the, another report that I, that I came across on internet. Uh, the research result, this is the research result from National Cybersecurity Alliance. And uh, millennials, the young adults say, they are not aware of cybersecurity professions. Even, even, even though the numbers are that obvious, and there are many, you know, openings, the postings about the cybersecurity jobs anywhere. And the, the situation for women are worse, because women are felt like they are less qualified than men, and 9% of more women, more, more women think that no one told, told with them about the opportunities in security, what they can do, uh, and so on. There are some certain opportunities in cybersecurity. You can be like, do you, do you remember Lizette Salander from the, the girl from the dragon tattoo? You can come up, you, you can end up with like her, or you, you want to be on the legal side. You can be a security engineer, security consultant, or security architect like me. If you want to do some, you know, fancy stuff, you can do some crypto analysis and you can work for the agencies, government. And if you are very hands-on and you want to do some forensic and you want to dig into the malware codes you, or you want to break the systems, you can be a penetration tester. Or at the end, you can end up being a CISO and you can make the money. There are, there, there are, there are many opportunities out there. And I really want you to be aware of those. I'm going to show you a screenshot that I got from Glassdoor. And these are the three job openings we have in CETA. These, these, these jobs are op open, and we are, we are not able to find qualified people for more than a year. And if you are really interested, or you know someone who might be interested, let me know. But I can assure you we are not able to find anyone who is qualified enough, enough to fill these positions in Montreal, in, 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 even in Canada. And even, even if this, you know, this need is that obvious, and there are some programs, master degrees, and so on, in terms of the security, we are still short about the talent in, in the sector. And if you like to start a cybersecurity, Career, even though you can be graduated from the electrical engineering like me, even though you are a software engineer, even if you, are, you have any degree from political science, like uh, anthropology, anything. If you have some interest and you are really interested, uh, I, can, I, I can give you some tricks that I got throughout the years.
to get into cybersecurity field. I, I hope this helps. This is not, I, I, I know, it's not like checklist, I read this, I, I watched the videos, I did this coding, and I, I end up like a cybersecurity profession. It's not like that. But if you want to start from a certain point, I believe these, these tricks could help you. Uh, first of all, for all profession, interest and the passion is the key factor for being successful. And I believe everyone likes, even likes making harmless pranks. And um, the, the, the first, the, the, if you want to build some solid background for the security, I can recommend you to learn about some networking, TCP, IP, client server architectures, wireless. Even though you don't pursue your career in, in security or cyber security, I, I believe it is going to help you a lot, even though you do some development, even though you build some wireless at, ho at your home. And if you don't have any virtual machine, it's very easy. You, you can just download it, run it on your computer, and put a computer image on this virtual machine, and you can try to break any system you want. And I, I will talk about certifications, but I believe in working in practically, and uh, practically, and trying to break the systems. And if you want to take the advantage of free courses, I can recommend you taking the Stanford's, MIT's, Coursera's, Udemy's uh, free courses. They, they help me a lot. And networking is the last, last thing I can recommend you. I don't mean like, I don't mean like throwing the, the business card in a cheesy way, but being a member of some security meetup gr meet meet up groups or um, or any group that you can find even in more real life, open web application security uh, project. They, they used to have some meetups monthly, and you can even come to them there if you are really interested. I, I like to share a reading list about the cyber security. Uh, maybe you might have read it before, but this is a, a small, ch small uh, ch choice that about the books that I like. The, the first one is from Kevin Mitnick. You might heard of him, I guess. He was a former hacker, uh, and after he was released from the federal, federal uh, prison, he started to work as a security <coughs> profession. And the, this book, the, the Art of Deception, Controlling the hum, Human Element Security, is full of real, real uh, stories. Uh, I really recommend it. And the second book is, second and the third book are about the hacking the systems, how to protect this network, the applications. The, the second book called Hacking Exposed. And the third book is about Metasploit, about which I will try to give further information. But with the help of Metasploit, you can write some exploits and break the systems. And the fourth book is from uh, Bruce Schneier. Uh, he's a very well-known security professional, and he's talking about the practical ways uh, to, uh, to protect your environment by meeting the business needs. And Python, Python, the fifth book is about Python. Python is a, you know, civic knife uh, tool for the developers, for the security professionals. This book is mostly um, focused on uh, being a cookbook for hackers and forensic analysis, uh, I really find it useful. And if you have time, if you find it, I, I, I might recommend you to read it. And the last book is from Gabrielle Coleman. You might heard uh, her name. He's an anthropology professor in McGill University. And he's working on the um, open source group uh, or the hacker, hacker groups or activists. And he's, she sneaked into Anonymous, and um, she tried to understand the group dynamics in the uh, uh, Anonymous. And she came up with the book Hacker, Hawk, Service, Blowers, and the Spy. Uh, there is an interesting interview uh, she made uh, in the book with a uh, former hacktivist as well. If you are interested with coding and you, uh, 
as I said, you can go with Python because Python is very easy to implement, very efficient, and, and there, there are many libraries out there. Uh, but I also recommend you to go with other uh, programming languages like C, C++, because 60% of the exploits are written in, in C and C++, and the most of the web, you know, web, most of the web applications are written in PHP, SQL, JavaScript, and HTML. It might be nice to know them uh, if you want to protect your application or you, if you want to penetrate the application. Even though most of the information out there is not very free and it costs a lot, uh, I try to consolidate the free source of information and tools. And I believe the organizers are going to share the slides with, with the attenders, and you can, you can get the whole list. Uh, but the, 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 the one I like most is the Brian Krebs on security. I can say it's the best, uh, especially uh, in terms of cyber fraud. And there are furthermore, like the threat level on board, the hackernews.com. And if you want to play with the open source security tools, uh, I compiled the list of all open source um, projects in GitLab. You do not need to buy Nessus scanner. You can, you can just compile the Breakman code, and you can have a vulnerable scanner run on, uh, written on Ruby and Rails. And there are other bunch of tools that I find very cool. Uh, even the passive DNS that I use currently is collecting the DNS records passively, and all the code, everything, the project itself is working for perfect. And you can go to GitLab and download the code and play with the uh, tools, other than spending you know thousand dollars on the tools. And if you have some virtual box in your computer installed. You can install the Kali Linux. It's a very well-known uh, open source open source tool. Uh, if if someone is watching Mr. Robot, it's a TV show about the hackers. They are also using the, the Kali. I have seen the the Kali Kali screen on the first season's fifth episode, I guess. And as I said, Kali is full of the well-known to tools like Nmap, doing the network mapping, virus hacker tools. Networks in the first, Metasploit, and Verb Suite, which is a uh, web penetration tool. And another uh, free open source penetration tool is the Web Security Doja. Uh, as in Kali, there are many useful tools like Verb Suite, OAP, Swanker, Red, Red Proxy. These are all free, and there are many documentation out there. And uh, I really recommend if you have time and interest to install this, uh, this web security doja and pl play with it. Uh, in terms of the security courses and the certifications, there are many institutes out there like the Science InfoSec, and the, the, the cost of its simple training is like $4,000, $6,000. Uh, uh, and also vendors providing some inform some courses and boot camp. But on Coursera, if you type like cybersecurity, there are really very, very good courses that you can, you can like, or Sailor Org, or the Cyber Access, or YouTube can provide you all free information about security, about using tools, about breaking the systems. Uh, and if you wanna go with the certification, these are the some certifications I can recommend you. I, I know the, in the interviews, the companies are asking for the certifications, but other than having a certification, I believe have, uh, having the expertise and practice in the first place, other than just having the title. Even myself, I have some, so many certifications because my previous companies paid for it. But these inform informations uh, that I got from the certifications are not updated. and. Uh, as I said, first practice and to train yourself and the experience, and then if your company is paying for the certifications, go with the certification. <laughs> and uh, to, to, to sum up, I, I just wanted to give you an idea about the talent crisis in, in cybersecurity, what am I doing, what I am doing in the security field, and my own 
uh, story just to be able to encourage you if you are interested. And I believe the, the list of the tools or the uh, training courses that I compiled might help you if you need some, you know, free support or information. Uh, I, I believe even though there isn't so, so much women in, in the field, uh, we can do it and uh, yeah, we can do it basically. Thank you. <laughs>